Hey guys, uh, good morning. Today is January 7th of 2023. Uh, today we're going to be continuing with reading this book. Um, and I'm going to start something today, which maybe I'll keep doing and maybe I won't. But I'm going to uh, just write next to it 1 7 23. And. I know that there are some people out there who think it's kind of apocryphal to write the date into a book or just write in a book, but uh, I don't know. I, I've always thought that writing a book was awesome. Uh, you know, you put your notes into it, it's that specific copy is di distinct and special. As a result, it's, it's your copy of the book. So. Anyway, uh, today we are reading The Principle-Centered Paradigm. Uh, let me start the timer, and I'm going to read for 10 minutes, and then uh, see how far I get, finish whatever section I'm on. And so I'll start the timer right now. The Principle-Centered Paradigm. The character ethic is based on the fundamental idea that there are principles that govern human effectiveness, natural laws in the human dimension that are just as real, just as unchanging, and unarguably there as laws such as gravity are in the physical dimension. An idea of the reality and the impact of these principles can be captured in another paradigm-shifting experience as told by Frank Koch in Proceedings the magazine of the Naval Institute. Two battleships assigned to the training squadron had been at sea on maneuvers in heavy weather for several days. I was serving on the lead battleship and was on watch on the bridge as night fell. The visibility was poor with patchy fog, so the captain remained on the bridge, keeping an eye on all activities. Shortly after dark, the lookout on the wing of the bridge reported light bearing on the starboard bow is it steady or moving astern the captain called out lookout replied steady captain which meant we were on a dangerous collusion course with that ship the captain then called to the signalman signal to that ship we are on a collusion course advise you change course 20 degrees back came a signal advisable for you to change course 20 degrees the captain said, send I'm a captain, change course 20 degrees. I'm a seaman, say, second class, came the reply. You had better change course 20 degrees. By that time, the captain was furious. He spat out, send I'm a battleship, change course 20 degrees. Back came the flashing light. I'm a lighthouse. We changed course. The paradigm shift experienced by the captain and by us as we read this account put the situation in a totally different light. We can see a reality that is superseded by his limited perception, a reality that is as critical for us to understand in our daily lives as it was for the captain in the fog. Principles are like lighthouses. They are natural laws that cannot be broken. As Cecil B. DeMille observed in the principles contained in his monumental movie, The Ten Commandments, it is impossible for us to break the law. We can only break ourselves against the law. While individuals may look at their own lives and interactions in terms of paradigms or maps emerging out of their experience and conditioning, these maps are not the territory. They are a subjective reality only an attempt to describe the territory. The objective reality, or the territory itself, is composed of lighthouse principles that govern human growth and happiness, natural laws that are woven into the fabric of every civilized society throughout history and comprise the roots of every family and institution that is endured and prospered. The degree to which our mental maps accurately describe the territory does not alter it ex its existence. The reality of such principles, or natural laws, 
becomes obvious to anyone who thinks deeply and examines the cycles of social history. These principles surface time and time again, and the degree to which people in a society recognize and live in harmony with them moves them toward either survival and stability or disintegration and destruction. The principles I am referring to are not esoteric, mysterious, or religious ideas. There is not one principle taught in this book that is unique to any specific faith or religion, including my own. These principles are part of most every major enduring religion, as well as enduring social philosophies and ethical systems. They are self-evident and can easily be validated by any individual. It's almost as if these principles or natural laws are part of the human condition, part of the human consciousness, part of the human conscience. They seem to exist in all human beings, regardless of social conditioning and loyalty to them. Even though they might be submerged or numbered by such conditions or disloyalty. I want to reread that one. They seem to exist in all human beings, regardless of social conditioning or loyalty to them, even though they might be submerged or numbered by such conditions or disloyalty. I am referring, for example, to the principle of fairness, out of which our whole concept of equity and justice is developed. Little children seem to have an innate sense of the idea of fairness, even apart from opposite conditioning experiences. There are vast differences in how fairness is defined and achieved, but there is almost universal awareness of the idea. Other examples would include integrity and honesty. They create the foundation of trust, which is essential to cooperation and long-term personal and interpersonal growth. Another principle is human dignity. The basic concept in the United States Declaration of Independence bespeaks this value or principle. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Another principle is service, or the idea of making a contribution. Another is quality or excellence. There is the principle of potential, the idea that we are embryonic and can grow and develop and release more and more potential, develop more and more talents. Highly related to potential is the principle of growth, the process of releasing potential and developed talents with the accompanying need for principles such as patience, nurturance, and encouragement. Principles are not practices. A practice is a specific activity or action. A practice that works in one circumstance will not necessarily work in another, as parents who have tried to raise a second child exactly like they did the first can readily attest. While practices are situationally specific, principles are deep. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. While practices are situationally specific, principles are deep, fundamental truths that have universal application. They apply to individuals, to marriages, to families, to private and public organizations of every kind. When these truths are internalized into habits, they empower people to create a wide variety of practices to deal with different situations. Principles are not values. A gang of thieves can share values but they are in violation of the fundamental principles we're talking about. Principles are the territory. Values are the maps. When we value correct principles, we have truth, a knowledge of things as they are. Principles are guidelines for human conduct that are proven to have enduring, permanent value. They're fundamental. They're essentially unarguable because they are self-evident. One way to quickly grasp the self-evident nature of principles is to simply consider the absurdity of attempting to live an effective life based on their opposites. I doubt that anyone would seriously consider unfairness, deceit, baseness, uselessness, mediocrity, or degeneration to be a solid foundation for lasting happiness and success. Although people may argue about how these principles are defined or manifested or achieved, there seems to be an innate consciousness and awareness that they exist. 
The more closely our maps or paradigms are aligned with these principles or natural laws, the more accurate and functional they will be. Correct maps will infinitely impact our personal and interpersonal effectiveness far more than any amount of effort expended on changing our attitudes and behaviors. All right, let's check the time real quick. Well, there's about 55 seconds remaining. For the next section, is it Lee? Oh, the next section is like five pages. So we're going to save the next section, Principles of Growth and Change for tomorrow. Uh, and in the meantime, if you are going to listen to some music anyway, go to Spotify, check out my profile, just type in William K in the search bar, and listen to some songs. And I hope you enjoy them. That'll be all for today. I hope you have a great January 7th. Thank you very much.